So if I had bent my knees a little bit less, what would have happened, Kate, to the time of the collision? If I had bent my knees less. Actually, that's, that, that's the reverse, right? If I bent my knees less, it would actually take less time for the collision. If it takes less time for the collision, what happens to the force during this collision? Oh, it's, greater. it's greater. Notice because the time is on the bottom in the equation, the less time this, this collision takes, the larger the force. Which, of course, begs the question, what would happen if I didn't bend my knees? Because if I didn't bend my knees, the force of the, or the time for the impact would actually be decreased quite a bit. And therefore, the force of impact would also be increased quite a bit. Unfortunately, this isn't an experiment I can do. I can't, I'm not going to step off the desk and not bend my knees. That would not be a good idea. Now, <laughs> um, a couple of years ago, I was actually trying to figure out what I could do at the, as school was out, and it, was, it had been a very long year, and I was trying to figure out what I could do to basically waste some time. You know, sometimes it's just good to do something entirely useless. And I figured out that one thing that I could do that was entirely useless was to watch some golf. Not that I have anything against golf, I actually very much enjoy playing golf. It's just that watching golf is entirely useless. It's not a good endeavor. So, however, I saw Sergio Garcia playing golf. I happened to be recording it as well, and, because I don't watch anything live, there came this. This is a high-speed video of <clears throat> hitting a golf ball with a club, and they slowed it down so you can see what's going on during this event. So we have a high-speed video of the golf ball getting hit by the club. And there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. And I thought, well, heck, if we can model, <clears throat> we can say, let's say the time of impact during the collision, if I don't bend my knees when I step off the desk, is approximately the same as the time of the collision with the golf ball and the club. Now, I don't know this to be true, but it's a good way that we can go through and estimate what the time of the collision would be for uh, me not bending my knees when stepping off the desk. So what we need here is we need the number of frames that the ball is in contact with the club. So we go through and count one, two, three, four, five, six. So the time during this collision is six frames. Now, what do we need in order to convert this from number of frames to actual number of seconds? Travis? The speed, uh, how many frames a high speed camera takes? The frame rate. Now, so what we need is the frame rate of the Konica Nolta Swing Vision camera. So I did a little research on the web, and you can't find anything about the frame rate of the Konica Nolta Swing Vision high speed camera online. So I called up Konica Nolta. And I asked them, what's the frame rate of your high-speed Konica Minolta swing vision camera? And I received this answer huh? <laughs> from several people. Uh, kind of transferred me through the ranks of Konica Minolta until I got to somebody <laughs> who gave me an answer at Konica Minolta. And their answer was this. It's proprietary information. Which means I have no idea, but we're not going to tell. Which I don't like. I don't like it when anybody tells me that they won't give me something. So I did a little bit of thinking, and I realized we can actually figure out the frame rate from the video. There's enough information in the video to figure out the frame rate. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to figure out the proprietary frame rate of the Konica Minolta Swing Vision camera so that we can then go through and figure out the time during the collision so that we can then use that to model what it would be like if I didn't bend my knees when stepping off the desk figure out the force of impact if I didn't bend my knees when stepping off the desk. Here we go. So, after the ball leaves the club, it goes through 12 frames 
when before it leaves the screen completely. So, in 12 frames, the ball travels, the displacement of the ball on the screen is equal to um, or 0 0.295 meters. This is the displacement of the ball on the screen after it's hit by the club. Now, that's the displacement on the screen. And just, you know, I went through and I did this with three different size screens, basically to do three different trials to make sure that I was getting approximately the same number each time, and I did. We're only gonna do one trial, but we're gonna walk through one representative trial. But we need to be able to, to translate between what's in this, on the screen and what happened in reality. How are we gonna be able to translate from the screen to reality? It's gotta be a way to get from the screen to what we know in reality. And? No, it would be how, that would configure out how far it traveled. Right, we need to know how, literally how far it traveled rather than how far it traveled on the screen, but how far it actually traveled in reality. How? Could you make a portion with like, portion that I hope or something to make the screen size? Uh, but we need to know, we need, a, we need something that we know the actual value of, as, as far as the, on the screen, show me. The golf, the golf ball, which is on the screen, has a size on the screen, but the golf ball, according to the PGA, needs to be a specific diameter. So we can use the diameter of the golf ball in reality and the di diameter of the golf ball on the screen to come up with a proportion between the screen and reality to figure out how far it actually traveled. So, the diameter on the screen of the golf ball is 0 0.16 meters. The diameter in reality of a golf ball is 0 0.04267 meters, or approximately 4.3 centimeters is the diameter of the ball in reality. So we can figure out the displacement of the uh, golf ball in reality if we take our 0 0.295 meters on the screen and we multiply it by the 0 0.16 meters on the screen on the bottom here and 0 0.04267 meters in reality. And that will give us the displacement of the golf ball in reality. <coughs> Point oh seven eight six seven two eight. Point oh seven eight six seven two eight. Uh, we'll just put it through there. And that's mute. So this means we now know that in reality, the golf ball traveled uh, almost eight centimeters on the screen when it, um, after it left the, the club head here. And it did that in 12 frames. So if we take our 0 0.078673 meters and divide it by our 12 frames, we will get Six one, and that's meters per frame. In other words, the golf ball during each of the frames after it leaves the club moves a distance of approximately uh, six and a half millimeters. We also have, if you follow all the way to the end here, they give us the speed of the ball. The speed of the ball is 174 miles per hour. We need to convert that over to meters per second so we can use it. So one hour on the top, 3,600 seconds on the bottom. Hours cancel out. And we need to go from miles to meters. So one mile on the bottom, 1609 meters on the top. Miles cancel out, but we get what is the speed of the ball. Seventy 
Three repeating, right? Yeah. Meters per second. So we have the speed of the ball. We now have all the information we need in these two pieces of information to get to the frame rate of the Konica Minolta swing and vision camera. What are the dimensions on the frame rate? Remind me, what are we trying to find here? Alice, what what is the what are the dimensions on frame rate? Um, frames per second. Frames per second. So our goal is to get to frames per second. How can we get to frames per second given the information we have on the board? Jay. Uh, divide your meters per frame number by meters per second. If we divide our meters per frame number, we're actually going to do the reverse because we get frames or we get seconds per frame if we did that. So it's going to be the reverse because we want frames per second. So if we take our meters per second and divide it by our meters per frame, we will get um, frames per second. I'm actually going to multiply by the inverse of meters per frame, which is the same thing, but it's a little bit easier to see on the board. So if we take our 77.7. 683 repeating meters per second, and we multiply that by the inverse of our uh, meters per frame, we get frames on the top, and 0 0.006556 meters on the bottom. The meters cancel out, and we get what? <clears throat> Eleven thousand eight hundred sixty-one. Eleven thousand eight hundred sixty-one. That's plenty. Frames per second. Now, as I said, I did this three times, and each time I got something that was very close to twelve thousand frames per second. So that is the frame rate of the Konica Minolta Swing Vision Camera. That proprietary information that I was told that they would not give me. We can now use that to figure out the change in time during the collision between the golf ball and the club. So we have delta t is equal to six frames, which we can multiply by one second over 1,200 frames. Frames cancel out, and we get delta t is equal to seconds, or if you prefer, 0 0.50 milliseconds. In other words, one half of one thousandth of a second. So the time that the ball is in contact with the club is only half of a millisecond, which makes the force between the force on the uh, golf ball very large, which makes the acceleration of the golf ball quite a lot, which makes the golf ball go a large distance. 